In this video, we're going to take a look at how to open an image from the image gallery in Android by using an implicit intent. Let me show you what I mean by showing you the live plant places application. This is the search by color screen. If I click the folder icon here, I can navigate into camera. I can pick an image, which is kind of a generic image because it's just the default uh, for, the, for the onboard camera emulator. But nonetheless, that's what we want to do. We have a button that will open the image gallery and show us an image. I want to show you a couple of other videos that might be helpful as well. First, if you're not familiar with Intense, I created a video overview of Intense in Android uh, just a couple days ago, so right before this video. Second, there's a video I, re I recorded just a couple of years ago called Getting an Image from the Image Gallery in Android Studio. I have to admit I'm a bit nostalgic about this one because it's my most widely viewed video uh, on YouTube, over 80,000 views at the time I'm making this recording. The recording you're watching is essentially an update of this video, getting an image from the image gallery in Android Studio. Uh, so just newer microphone, newer project, and also I'm using butter knife, or in the old video I didn't use butter knife. All else though, pretty much the same. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. What do we need? We need an activity with a button and an image view, and we do already have that. We made that in a previous video. So if we take a look here at the GPS of plant screen, we activated this camera button earlier. Now we have this open, button here, this kind of open file button, we need to add some action behind that. We need an implicit intent. Remember, an implicit intent means we're typically calling something that is outside of our application, where an explicit intent means we're explicitly calling a screen within our application. Now, once we have that implicit intent that invokes the gallery, we need something called on activity result, which I'm going to call a self-addressed stamped envelope. Let's take a look at these one at a time. So an activity with a button, we completed this in a previous video, we just need to add the event handler. Let's do that now. So color capture activity, that's the screen that we're looking at. This is going to be easy to do because all we need to do is take a look, content color capture, what did I call that open button? And let's see, I called it, just a moment, we'll click here. And, oh, there we go, BTN open gallery, something like that. So I'm gonna highlight, control C, I'm going to go back to my activity. Now, what I need to do is I essentially need to duplicate one of these event handlers like I made in a previous video. If you didn't see that video, no problem. We'll do it fresh right here. So give myself some space and I'm going to say public, has to be public, void. And then we'll say paste, btn open gallery, clicked. The method name can be any reasonable method name that I want. I tend to name it after the button just so kind of, so I can remember what I'm doing. Uh, but really beyond that, you could name it whatever you want. You might want to make something a bit more generic. Okay, nonetheless, now let's wire this up to the button using butter knife. So I'm going to say on click, which is, as you see, an annotation, and then r.id.btn take photo clicked, or uh, sorry, btn take photo. And there we go. Now this method is wired up to that button. So what do we do next? Well, we need to make our implicit intent. And remember, implicit intent, we're just saying in broad terms what we want to do. An action constant. That's where I'm saying I want a football player. Data. That's where I'm saying this football player, I want the football player to be a quarterback. Type. That's saying I want the football player to come from the University of Cincinnati. So you see we go from a very broad concept of I want a football player to I want a quarterback from UC. And that's what we're doing here in this intent. And we're letting the Android operating system pick the best match. Or if there are multiple matches, it'll bring up a screen and it will let us pick the best match. So let's go ahead and do this part. This is the same color capture activity we were dealing with earlier. I've just put it into presentation mode to make it easier for you to view. So let's start with our intent. I'm going to say new intent and then intent.actionPick. Now remember, this looks much more confusing than it really is because action pick simply resolves to a string. And if you wanted, you could put that string in here, but uh, we can leave it like so just as well. Okay, let's see what the light bulb says. Introduce local variable. We could also do control alt V in Android Studio and that gives us our intent. Okay, the next line is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to say environment dot get external storage public directory and then environment dot directory pictures. Now what is this? 
This is the shared location on the SD card where all applications can write a photo, like the camera for instance. So a little bit long-winded to get there, but nonetheless we got there. Now let's save this to a variable. Remember the shortcut, Control-Alt-V. Let's call it File Picture Directory. I'm giving it a kind of long name because I'm about to make a, a similar variable and I want to make them distinct. Now what are we doing here? Remember we start with the intent, I want a football player. We have to narrow that down, so File is saying I want a football player from the University of Cincinnati. And then Type will be I want a quarterback football player from the University of Cincinnati. So we have to put this in a form that the gallery view is going to understand it, and that means we have to convert it to a URI. So I'm going to say URI parse, and I'm going to pass in the file, uh, the, whoops, there we go, file picture directory, but I can't just pass it in as a file. I have to get the path for it. So I'm going to say dot get path. And terminate with the semicolon. You know what we need to do here if we want to get a variable, control alt V, and we're going to call this one data. Finally, let's define our type. And our type is going to be easy. It's simply going to be a string. So string type equals image and then asterisk, which means we want to get images of any, t any file extension, JPEG, PNG, GIF, so on and so forth from this location. So let's say start activity for result. Now that might sound familiar, maybe not. We have previously used uh, start activity for result in a previous video, but we've also used a method called start activity. Now what's the difference? Start activity is fire and forget. Start this activity and we're done. Start activity for result means I'm starting another activity and I expect that I'm going to hear back from that activity when it's finished and it might give me something in return. So let's start by passing in the intent we've been building. And then the next thing we need is a request code. Now request code is just a fingerprint. That means when I get back this response from the gallery, I want to say, hey, this came from the gallery. Request code, as you see, is an integer. So I can put in any number I want there. Why don't I put in 1998 and terminate with a semicolon. Okay, now which is more readable? Line 58, which we did in a previous video, where we uh, are passing an intent and then a constant, so a constant is a variable where the value doesn't change, a constant called camera request code, or intent with the number 1998. The number 1998 is essentially meaningless. It's a magic number. It's not self-descriptive. So what you would have to do is put a comment above here that says 1998 is the unique code for start activity for result, but that's ugly. Let's find a better way. I highlight, I control alt C, I'm going to create a constant. This constant is going to be gallery request code. You could image gallery if you want. I'm gonna call mine gallery request code. Take a look and it shows us right up above that it's going to declare and initialize the static final, in other words, a constant variable called gallery request code. All uppercase separated by underscores is typically how we would name a constant. Again, constant means the value won't change. So I add that and you see now it looks a lot more readable. We know what's going on. Now, as I look back at this, double check my work, I realize I did miss one line. Let's go ahead and add it now before I forget. I simply forgot to put the data and type on the intent. So I'm going to say intent and then guess what? Set data and type. The data is going to be a URI, that's easy. That's our word data. And the type is going to be the string called type. And of course, terminate with the semicolon, a little space for neatness, and we're in good shape. Now, where do we receive the image that the user picked? For this, we need a method called onActivityResult, which is essentially a self-addressed stamped envelope. That's what I call it. A callback method or a self-addressed stamped envelope. This is where we're going to see the image the user picked. What is a self-addressed stamped envelope? When I was a young man, or let's say a, a child growing up in Cincinnati, at summer between school terms, a lot of times I'd watch The Price is Right. And at the very end, they said, if you want tickets to The Price is Right, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to this address in Hollywood, California. We'll mail you the tickets, so on and so forth. And so this is essentially a self-addressed stamped envelope, this image courtesy of WikiHow. Um, I put my address as the mail to address on an envelope. And then I take the envelope, I put a stamp on it, and what do I do with the envelope? I put it in another envelope with a stamp on it, and I mail this bigger envelope to Hollywood, California. Someone in Hollywood opens up the big envelope, finds my little envelope that's addressed to me, opens that envelope, puts two tickets to the prices right or whatever I've ordered, drops it in the mailbox, and it comes back to me. So the self-addressed stamped envelope 
is the old school method of, uh, of essentially a callback method. We have to keep in mind that the internet wasn't always with us. When, and the reason I said when I was a young man growing up in Cincinnati in the 1980s, I suppose the internet existed, but we certainly didn't know what it was. Uh, and the way you would get tickets to a, to a show or anything like that was this method of self-addressed stamped envelope, which you just don't hear so much about anymore. But let's see how we can do it in code. So I need to make a method called onActivityResult. And holy smokes, look, I already have a method called onActivityResult. Why is that? Because in the previous video, we also had a self-addressed stamped envelope, and that was from invoking the camera. Now we're sending in a self-addressed stamped envelope, and this time it's from the gallery view. So when these self-addressed stamped envelopes reach my mailbox, how do I know if it's from the photo or from the gallery view? Well, note that's what this return address is for on the self-addressed stamped envelope. If I were send, if I were asking for Prices Right tickets, this would be the Prices Rights address. This would be my address because that's the self-addressed stamped envelope. When I get this back in the mail, I see it came from the price is right. So how do we do that in code? Well, that's what this gallery request code is for, that number 1998. Because you see, the request code is essentially the return address of the intent that's calling us back. In other words, that is the price is right or it is the $64,000 pyramid or whatever game was on back in the 80s. So this tells us what we're coming back from. First, did the user choose OK or cancel? Let's get that out of the way. Next, what's the return address on the envelope we've just received? You see, we've already handled camera, so let's add an else if to this, and let's handle the, the gallery. I'll say request code, and then we'll say equal equal, and then we'll say gallery request code. Now, once again, doesn't gallery request code make a whole lot more sense than 1998? That would work just the same, but what does 1998 mean? I don't know. Good year for me, which is why I picked it, but it has no meaning beyond that. So let's go ahead and make this work. So, okay, else if I'm going to say, remember this thing called data. If you remember that from our camera video, that is essentially the, what, what the contents of the envelope that we open up. In this case, I'm going to say data.getData. And I want to store this into a field because I know I'm going to be using it later. So control alt F this time, and let's call it selected image like so. Okay, now uh, caution here. In old school Android, all we need to do is add a permission to the Android manifest. In newer Android, so about 24 and greater, we have just-in-time permissions, so we ask for permission at time of need. That complicates things and makes this video about twice its length, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to prep for the next video. I'm gonna pause here in just a few more moments after I complete a little bit here. And then I'm going to kind of direct you to a second part of this video where we're just going to look at permissions uh, specifically. So uh, make it a little easier if that's all you wanna see. At the moment, to finish up this video, let's pretend old school Android permissions. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm not going to work on permissions just yet, but I am going to make a new method called, let's say, open image, just like so, and alt enter, create method, open image, and there's our... Okay, so we'll start with, let's say, get content resolver, open input stream. Now what does open input stream take? Well, it takes a URI, and guess what we got back from our gallery, from our image gallery request on line 88? Selected image is actually a URI. So we can pass selected image directly in to this uh, get content resolver open input stream. Now it's redlining, so what I'm going to do is surround with try catch, and in the catch block, I'm just going to do a toast and say toast dot make text this comma, uh, then we'll say unable to retrieve image toast dot length long and then dot show. Resist the urge to leave catch blocks empty because then your program and your user thinks everything went okay when actually it did not go okay. So okay, uh, now we want to put this into a local variable, control alt V. We will go ahead and call it input stream. Okay, and then I'm going to say bitmap factory dot decode stream, and then we'll say image uh, input stream. 
So what's going on here? Well, we're starting with something that's fairly generic, which uh, just says, open this stream up. Give me access, or in other words, here's a URI. There's something at that URI, go get it. That's what's happening on line 103. Line 104, okay, we have the URI. We don't know what to do with it. Well, guess what? It's a bitmap. So let's take this data, these zeros and ones, and let's consider it to be a bitmap. So now I'm going to, uh, let's say, Control-Alt-F, and we'll call this just uh, image. I hate using a name that generic, but we'll go ahead and call it just image. Now one more line here, and we're good. Let's go to the um, image view, or uh, sorry, it was uh, IMG thumbnail. What's IMG thumbnail? That is uh, something we brought in with Butterknife in a previous video. Uh, that is essentially the widget of the image view that is on the on the application already. So we accessed that when we were using the camera. Nonetheless, img sum th uh, thumbnail dot set image bitmap image, just like so. Okay, so again, assuming the older permissions model, we have one more line we need to go and then we can take a look. So I'm going to double shift and I'm going to say Android manifest and up towards the top, we need to put a permission line in. So right about here after manifest, but before application, I'm going to say uses permission and Android name, we're going to say android.permission.read external storage because we need access to the SD card to, uh, to access that image. Now I can do a partial demonstration with this. And I say partial just because with the permissions issue, we're not actually going to be able to open a photo, but we can at least see that using the lines that we've set here in the BTN Open Gallery clicked, we are able to open the image gallery. So I click the button and take a look, the breakpoint stops, and I F8, 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 F9 on start activity for result, come back over and take a look at my application, uh, we have the images up. Let me go ahead and press back and take the breakpoint off so you can see that a little bit faster. So breakpoint off, we come back, open, in just a moment, image gallery, just a few more moments, the images appear. Now you notice when I select one, the application will die. And it's going to tell me, uh, okay, plain places has stopped. I go to the console view. And if we take a look at the console, it says, you know, cannot read this permission denial. Anytime you get one of those, the application stopped, run here to the debug and then the console tab. A lot of times it will tell you exactly what the issue is. In this case, the issue is we need that permission, read external storage, and we need to do it with the newer just-in-time model. So in our next video, we'll take a look at how to do that. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.